How's it going everyone? It's Kevin from Balls to You and this is going to be an update video regarding the banning of a particular gene or uh, genes in particular species at one of our or one of our only reptile shows. Um, okay, first things first, uh, money. Uh, people have been saying yes we shouldn't breed an animal with defects to profiteer off money. Uh, the spider gene is one of the standard genes that is bred into combos uh, and there's no major profit in a spider gene compared to something like a spider and a pastel for example there's no difference it's exactly the same okay so money making money off it really that's wrong we don't make money uh, on, on anything nowadays it's, it's more of a passion um, so the money side of things yes I agree if there's an animal there which has got big money behind it and you're breeding it and it's potentially you know a major problem then yeah I'll get that I'm, I'm totally behind you okay I'm the first person to say don't breed that animal because of its genetic defects due to the fact uh, that it's all down to money it's not down to money okay because if that was the case then we'd stop breeding certain lines of dogs and cats um, because they have genetic defects stuff like bad limbs or bad hips uh, eczema on the skin all that sort of stuff so long story short it's not to do with money guys it's nothing about money uh, there's no way you can become a millionaire in this hobby like you used to be able to um, <clears throat> you, you couldn't even cover your mum's wages really if you think about it um, because if you could then a lot of people would be doing this full time in the UK as opposed to doing it as a part time hobby um, this for me is a part time hobby as in it's a hobby business so as long as my collection pays for itself and and that's it that's all I'm bothered about I don't make clutches to supply to pet shops as in I don't just breed a normal to a normal to produce normals to sell to a pet shop I don't do that I don't I don't sell to wholesalers if you like um, so that's that it's nothing to do with money okay it's a bigger bigger picture than that and for those who just think it's down to money, I'm sorry, you're probably nice people, but you need to open your mind a little bit because it's nothing to do with money. Um, I make just as the, the same money as selling a pastel combo as I do a spider combo, so there's no uh, major money in it. Um, if we're talking about making money in particular reptiles, uh, then unfortunately we've been, or the hobby, or the industry, or the reptile industry, whatever you want to call it, has been making money in reptiles since the 1960s, since uh, Tom Crutchfield and all that them guys are back in the day were smuggling in reptiles um, so money's been floating about in reptiles for years and years uh, so it is the way it is however it's not just the fact that we're breeding them just because it's worth the money because that's not the reason at all second of all is that um, going on to saying that um, this is the only platform that we sell our animals it's not the only platform um, it's a good platform. It's a, a place where people get to meet people because it is more of a meet and greet now more than, than anything. Um, you know, I, I can guarantee you there's not many people who, who sell out every year there. Um, I've never sold out at, at every show. I sold out at the last show. That was because I held back quite a few snakes that I wanted to take um, and not sell prior before going to the show. So it's not excuse me got an itchy nose it's not about like I said it being the only platform to sell animals because we've got the morph market and the morph market is fantastic okay it's not the only platform to sell animals and I do agree if you are breeding too many and you can't sell them then don't breed them I'm behind you on that totally agree don't breed them if you can't sell them and that also comes around to another one um, regarding sort of producing animals just to uh, you know sell them to try and make more money again similar to the first one and again similar to to the second one um, a lot of these people in the industry now or in the hobby now are passionate breeders who are coming you know I see a lot of newbies coming into the into the hobby uh, and they're doing things the right way okay so they're coming in because they know there's no money in it they're coming in because they're passionate about it and that's what it all comes down to guys all about being passionate about what you're doing okay so um, a lot of the breeders back in the day used to sell animals and rip people off they used to sell stuff like uh, a pastavi they'd pass it off as being a phantom pastel 
which has happened to a good friend of mine. Um, selling hets off as hets when they really weren't hets. And that's happened to another good friend of mine. Um, selling animals that won't breed, okay, they've had them for years and years and years, they won't breed, and selling them as proven breeders. I've had that happen to a friend of mine as well, and it's also happened to me. Here's one for you. Animals that have been sold as females but are really males. How many times have you guys out there come across a situation or know a person who's brought an animal that's meant to have been a female and has actually turned out to be a male or vice versa? Because that's happened a lot. Sometimes it can be a genuine mistake, but guess what? If you've got a male pied that's X amount of money and you've got a female which is triple the amount and someone's after a female, there are people out there who will tell you this snake is a female and sell it for the money and do a disappearing act. Uh, and there's people out there as well, breeders, and I'm talking breeders because responsible breeders shouldn't really or won't really rip you off. They'll try and, you know, if they make a mistake, they'll try and correct it as best as possible. Um, but breeders out there, there are breeders out there who will try and tell you this snake will lay golden eggs. Yeah, I know. And again, I've heard that before. I've heard that this snake will breed and everything that will come out of it will be um, a um, thousand pound snake. And it, and it hasn't been, I'm not, I can't really say too much because it will give it, give it away. I've also had people try and sell animals as a lesser Mojave. Now for those who know what they're on about, a lesser Mojave would obviously be a pure white snake like uh, Blue Eyed Lucy obviously. Um, but actually what it was was a lesser um, yeah it was a lesser uh, entry uh, and and again mixing up genes can get confusing and I get people don't quite know sometimes regarding they get confused with the genes I get that however this person that was trying to sell someone this particular animal was a well known breeder uh, so yeah so it's all about the ripple effect it's not about anything to do with the IHS you know if the IHS stopped tomorrow it still wouldn't stop us from doing the hobby or selling our surplus animals uh, because there isn't that many surplus animals as such like there used to be because a lot of people now are quality rather than quantity so breeding for that reason so there's not much you know if the IHS stopped tomorrow it wouldn't be a problem and that's not what I'm trying to get this across this is me sort of trying to say to you guys we don't need anything banning full stop Okay, look at all the dangerous dogs. And again, I'm saying dogs because that's something that's recently hit uh, certain dogs that have been banned from importation or breeding or um, on the Dangerous Dog Act. Uh, now, you tell me, is it the dogs that are dangerous or the owner? I've had bull, uh, Staffordshire Bull Terriers in, in my family for over 40 years. And, and I mean, not just... You know, not just me, like, like my granddad, my, my parents, my, my aunties, my uncles, friends. And none of their dogs have ever attacked a child or done anything like that. Um, it's down to the owner. And it's the same with breeding animals. It's down to the breeder being a respectable breeder. And let's face it, it is what it is. Um, a lot of people who are on Facebook are having a uh, say and saying, yes, they should ban it, they should ban it. I get that, that's fine, you're entitled to your opinion. But look at the people who are saying ban the gene. Are they at the IHS? Are they a member, sorry? Do they go to the shows? Do they vend at the shows? Because I'll guarantee you there's a lot of people, if you look at the posts that are floating about, they don't even vend at the show anymore because they've basically had a falling out with the IHS or they, you know, for whatever reason. And again, I'm not getting involved in your beef with the, the IHS guys. It's nothing to do with me, to be honest with you. I don't really care. All I'm trying to point out is this negativity of banning a particular gene could have a ripple effect that may affect you later on along the lines. And I'm not talking about just because you, you don't vent there, it's not going to affect you because it might. Reptile couriers, breeders of rodents, stuff, all that sort of stuff, it could have, an, it could have a, a knock-on effect. People could start dumping animals at rescue centers okay i'm not saying it will but it could okay people could start euthanizing uh, that particular gene okay because they know that, that 
that, that they can't sell it at that particular show and that's the only show that they normally vend at there's a lot of people that only vend at that show and they're great breeders they're not arseholes they're not scammers they're not anything like that okay look at the people who are liking the comments they're on Facebook to do with banning the spider gene do they vend at the shows no so to me it looks more of a boycott so let's boycott the IHS I, I don't know for whatever reason personal reasons I don't know maybe they don't like the people who run the IHS maybe they don't like Richard who runs the show I don't know you know you can't you can't get on with everyone you can't please everyone but all I'm trying to say for you guys out there okay who are on Facebook who have a negative thing to say think about the bigger picture there's a few ball python people that went there the weekend okay and come back with stuff like millipedes and leaf tail geckos and crested geckos and other bits and pieces I was looking at dart frogs and tarantulas I won't get a tarantula I'm too scared but you know what I mean they, they go there for other things and, and it was just fantastic to meet other people I had a girl come all the way from Ireland to meet me uh, which was fantastic that was just one person coming through the door uh, I had people coming down from Edinburgh and again I, that's me telling them about the show that's me saying to them look guys you need to come to the show I had people from uh, all the way down from Swansea come all the way up to the show to either pick up an animal or just to come and see and experience the show for themselves um, we should be educating people we should be wanting to get passionate people into this hobby not scare them away not tell people a load of BS that the spider gene is this and the spider gene is that work with the gene yourself see what you feel Okay. maybe you've got a particular line of spider that has a crazy wobble I don't know Okay. I don't know all I'm trying to say to you guys out there and this isn't me trying to draw swords and let's it's us against them I'm trying to say to you guys you know there's enough government people out there who can control us who say you must pay this much tax you must do this you must do that don't you think this is very similar I think at the end of the day we're losing our mind and I think we should all stand together and they shouldn't ban it really I think what we should do is look at the breeders and we should look at them with those people who stitch people up okay because that's what I get emails about this breeder stitched me up he told me that he told me it was a female and it's turned up and it's a male now I can't get hold of this breeder uh, and he's ignoring my calls and he's ignoring this he's ignoring that uh, people who are selling stuff that they're not really what they are and they know this and they're stitching people up that way shouldn't we be looking at them first rather than talking about banning genes because I think so so thanks for your time thanks for listening again for all those on Facebook who are against banning the spider I hope you're all okay, and please, this is nothing personal. It's nothing against you guys, but look at the bigger picture, okay? For those people who are out there who are breeding rodents for the reptile industry, who are supplying us with a delivery service or a courier service, for those people who run reptile forums, okay, on, on Facebook or a reptile group, a groups, whatever they are. I'm not on Facebook, so I don't really know. For those admin people, look at what sort of example you're setting for people, newbies, young people who want to get into the hobby. And again, I'm not saying that spider genes will fall by the wayside and we won't be able to sell them and we'll all be sending them to animal sanctuaries. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's a possibility. Okay? I'm saying it's a possibility. So, think of the bigger picture. Educate yourself. Educate other people. You guys know who's dodgy breeders out there, who stitch other breeders up as well. There's loads of people out there. Um, and you guys need to all wipe the shit from your eyes and smell the coffee. Because ultimately it's going to affect us all one way or another. And that's just my, that's just my say. Okay? For all you out there on Facebook who don't follow me, who aren't supporters, that's fine. I've got love for you all. Uh, for all those that do support me, I love you guys. I think you're all fantastic. And again, take care, and I'll speak to you guys soon. Take care.